What's going on YouTube? Neither the Honda Accord or Toyota Camry really need an introduction, because it's safe to bet that everybody watching this video has either owned one or knows someone who owns one. Since the 1980s, these two have been locked in an intense battle for the hearts of American families, and that battle has been renewed with the introduction of an all new Honda Accord. So did Honda do enough to take down the latest Camry once and for all? Or is the Toyota the one to buy? Let's go ahead and find out. Alright, so as always, let's start off by quickly mentioning the pricing and equipment. Today we have fully loaded examples of both models. So for Camry, that is the XSE. With the options required for feature parity with the Accord, the total rings in at $39,041. Now for the all new Accord, we have the Touring trim level. It starts out more expensive, but Honda doesn't offer any option packages, so the grand total is slightly less at $38,995. So with the price difference of only $46, let's get into the comparison. The Camry recently got a mild refresh, but by and large it has looked pretty much the same way since 2018. However, it has aged really gracefully, and still has a sporty look up in the front particularly. Now the Accord is all new this year, and its design has taken a big step from sporty towards mature. Its front end has a simplified trapezoidal shape, punctuated by narrow LED headlights. The Camry also has LED lights, but they are a more premium projector variety. Now heading to the side, the new Accord has grown over 2 inches, which means it's now longer than the Camry. Both of them have pronounced body lines and 19 inch alloy wheels. The Camry continues to stand out for its available blacked out roof option, which gives it a sportier and more dynamic design. The same deal applies in the rear as well, with the Camry looking aggressive and the Accord going for the new mature and sophisticated design language that many recent Hondas have been adopting. Part of that look involves deleting exposed exhaust outlets from all trims, which the Camry retains, and both have full LED taillights. Now heading on to some of the other features, both models have heated mirrors with blind spot monitoring. And let's talk about the other important safety features. Honda and Toyota both include their models in tire safety suites as standard equipment, so all models will have adaptive cruise control, auto high beam headlights, lane keeping assist, and automatic emergency braking systems. Alright, so that's it for the exteriors, which means it's now time to check out the more important cabins before we can pair them out on the road. So first walking up to the cars, both of them include smart entry systems, but only Accord has remote start on the fob included free for life. Once we actually reach the interiors, we have very different designs. Camry was updated a couple years ago, and the new Accord doesn't radically reinvent the look that the previous generation had. Starting with the seats, both have black leather with 10-way power adjustment. Both have heating, but only the Accord includes ventilation at this price point. Once inside, we can talk about the cabin materials. In this regard, both are good and about equal, with soft touch plastics and leatherette in all the commonly touched areas. We will give partial credit to the Accord for having leather padding on the console and the touring trim. After starting up the vehicles, you'll find a more traditional gauge setup in the Camry with a 7-inch multi-function display and a full digital one in the Accord. Additionally, the Honda adds a head-up display, which is not available on the Camry unless you add the pricey driver's assist package. Coming back to the steering wheels, they are both leather wrapped and manual adjusting, but only the Camry has heating. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is interior storage. Honestly, the two are pretty much neck and neck, both having giant center consoles and plenty of storage up front. Heading to the shifters, both have the traditional kind, 
And when in reverse, neither of them have a 360 degree camera system as equipped. The next stops are the climate controls, where both sedans have dual zone automatic functionality, and then the audio systems. Let's go ahead and hear a sample. The Camry's JBL is fine, but the Bose system on the Accord has the more detailed sound and bass from its additional three speakers. And now that brings us to the displays and infotainment. The Toyota screen is 9 inches, but the new Accord has leapfrogged it this year with a 12.3 inch one. Additionally, the Honda has moved to a new Google-based infotainment system, which means it has Google Maps, Assistant, and other services built right into the system. This makes the software more robust and speedier than the Camry's, which has not yet been updated past the old Intune system. If you don't want to use the built-in software, both have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it's only wireless on the Accord. And wrapping up the front of the cabin, Toyota fights back with Homelink Universal Remotes built into its auto dimming mirror, and it also has a panoramic sunroof, which is something still not offered on the Accord. Now moving to the rear seats, both are very spacious, but the Accord's legroom advantage has actually grown a bit this year to over 7%. Once in the back, there are some features to keep everyone comfortable, more so in the Honda. Both have rear vents and fold down armrest, but Accord also has USB ports for charging and heated rear seats. Just like the rear seats, the Accord's extra length pays off in the trunks. It has 16.7 cubic feet of cargo capacity versus 15.1 in the Camry, and both models can fold their seats down. Alrighty, that's it for the interiors, but now let's see if one of them has a big advantage out on the road. For such close competitors, they have very different powertrain strategies. For all but the lowest two trims, the new Accord is only available as a hybrid, which includes the Touring, of course. In comparison, the XSE Camry is available with three powertrain choices, the 2.5 liter four cylinder we have today, a hybrid, or even a V6. Giving people the option to pick what's best suited to them is point worthy, although it must be noted that as equipped, the Accord does have a huge torque advantage. We're off to the races here with the touring all-new Honda Accord. Now, of course, as you've heard numerous times heading up to this point, the touring model, as well as most of the trim models in the all-new Accords lineup, is going to be hybrid exclusive. So what you're going to get is Honda's new fourth-generation two-motor hybrid system that's going to be combining a two-liter four-cylinder engine with two electric motors, as you would expect. Um, and total system output here is 204 horsepower, 247 pound-feet of torque. Both of those are gonna be up from the previous hybrid system that was offered on the Accord, especially the torque figure, I believe. There's our first acceleration with the XSE Camry. Now you could probably tell we've got the four-cylinder, not the V6. <laughs> Nevertheless, the V the four-cylinder version of the Camry with the XSE does have three more horsepower than all the other versions. So yep. uh, that's what you'll get for today. That's gonna be 206 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. With totally different powertrain arrangements, it's not surprising that the transmissions are also different. ECVT versus 8-speed automatic. To be fair, the Camry also utilizes an ECVT in hybrid form, but only the Camry has available all-wheel drive. Now 
Now, speaking of uh, other aspect of the powertrain, um, with the hybrid system, you have a, basically an eCVT. It's not really a CVT, but your overall performance or what you should expect to feel is CVT-like. Yeah. Um, I mean that in the sense that um, you do have, you know, kind of a seamless power delivery, right? But we do have shift simulation versus the previous generation of Honda's hybrid system. That's going to make it feel or at least sound more traditional. Another thing you can feel is that we have an 8-speed automatic transmission on board whereas many of the rivals are using continuously variable transmissions. Um, definitely like the fact that we have the traditional 8-speed on board, um, you know, so you don't have the droning or anything like that. Response, of course, is instantaneous, and um, this is a good transmission. As far as the experience driving these two, it is pleasant, if a bit different. Ride quality-wise, the Camry is softer and more comfortable part of which might be due to the fact that the adaptive dampers Accord Touring used to offer are no longer available. But now that we're cruising along the highway, I do want to talk about your ride quality. We are in the Touring level uh, Accord, so this is going to be the smoothest riding uh, version of this model. And I have to say I'm very impressed by the ride quality. I don't see a massive difference between we actually drove the uh, Sport this morning. I think the ride quality is roughly similar in this Accord. I don't know if they've really tuned it too differently. I don't think they changed I, anything. I feel like it is pretty much identical, but that's certainly not a bad thing because it soaks up the bumps really well. The seats are really comfortable. We've already been driving it for nearly two hours today, and I'm completely uh, not tired at all. So, But now you may be curious if you've seen other Camry reviews and you know, you're watching this one specifically for the XSE trim level and you're like, does it make it too hard edged for my family? It definitely doesn't. I will say that the XSE is mainly styling. They do do some stuff in the driving dynamics, which we will talk about, uh, but it's mainly styling and this is certainly gonna still be a very comfortable offering for you and all of your family. It's quiet and you know, as we'll see as we head over this bridge here, it really soaks up bumps really well. On the flip side though, Honda definitely emphasizes driving dynamics more, so the Accord has balanced steering and a more buttoned-down chassis. I'm going to get into some curves here, so I'm going to clip, flip it back into sport mode here, and let's talk about driving dynamics. Now of course, uh, one of the things that Honda really has always been good at doing is baking in some good driving dynamics into the Accord even though it is still family focused and comfortable so let's put that to the test here it's a beautiful canyon road for yeah, it for sure so let's round some corners yeah nice nice body control I'm really liking that we going around this corner here we really have very little body roll whatsoever the steering as well when you go into the sport mode, it gets a little bit firmer, but in all the trim levels, one of the things I really notice about the Accord is that you don't have like a big dead spot or just like so light and loose that you have no feeling. Many of the rivals are like that. This Accord, you really have a good sense of where you have placed the, the wheels on the We have included for your reference the sound level readings for these two, although they can't directly be compared. The Accord was taken on a rough road in California, and Camry taken at a lower speed of 50 miles per hour. And let's get our sound level reading going 55. Looks like our official reading is going to be sitting at 62.4 decibels for this Accord. And we're going to get a sound reading going 50 miles an hour. And we're sitting at 54.6 decibels. Finally, as far as fuel economy, the hybrid Accord obviously has a big advantage. We will score them as equipped, but I will point out that the Camry Hybrid does actually get slightly better fuel economy. 
So there you have it. That's the end of another competitive race between two heavyweight midsize sedans. Based on comments we have seen from you guys, many people feel strongly that one is better than the other. But as you can see from the score, they are both excellent choices. We want to know your opinions, so make sure to head down to the comment section below and let us know which one you would pick. Anyway, thanks for joining us for another car confections comparison. And be sure to subscribe for more comparisons, full reviews, auto show coverage, and all the latest automotive delicacies. Take care, and we'll see you next time.